Hello everybody, in uh, this second part, which I am finally making, uh, sorry for the very long uh, delay between the first video and this video, been busy finishing up with school, so that is why. So, okay, I'm just going to go through how I did the actual rendering on this. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm doing with the shader is I'm using a... Uh, point attribute which is cd so basically all i'm doing is if i go over to this i'm doing a intersection analysis so i'm figuring out where the collisions are um where the curves intersecting itself and i am drawing uh colors on the intersections you can do this in a bunch of different ways you could actually just use noise and it would probably look almost the same honestly um, I'd probably do that. The other way is kind of slow and stupid and it was just kind of an experiment, but, um, either way it, it's not, oop, it's not too difficult. Just kind of, you can just use whatever noise and use that as an attribute. So if you're wondering why these colors look weird, it's because they're actually like HDR values. And so, um, all I'm doing is I'm taking that attribute, putting it into a ramp, and then adding like a big like a uh, black spot in the middle to get these like really like uh, more defined chunks. And then I'm in the OSL. Uh, I'm using an OSL node um, for Redshift, so that's in like the newer versions of Redshift. I think it's like three point uh, forty some three point whatever I forget um I'm using three point I'm using 3.46 right now there are 3.0.46 um and so I'm just using a aluminum shader um it's just a preset aluminum shader um and then I'm overriding it, so I'm adding the uh, emission color. So I'm putting the the black body dot OSL. You can find this in the uh, Redshift um, OSL GitHub. I can put a link. I'll put a link to that in the description. And then um, yeah, so I'm just adding uh, emission weight and uh, plugging in the color. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the emission rate really, really high and a lot higher than it probably should be. It gets, it's kind of noisy, but it allows you to have like sort of emit, emitting lights. Um, and that's all I did for the lines. Um, if we render it, it will look like this, make the window smaller. And yeah, so it'll look like this. I just have a simple depth of field on here. And um, yeah, so here's the wire shader. The only other thing that I'm doing is this uh, smooth, like, smooth but fingerprint, like, covered, uh, I don't know, glass or plastic of some sort. So let's look at, the, at that node. And so all I'm doing is I'm using a uh, Megascans uh texture it's just a mega scans of uh fingerprints so they might have free ones for that i am not sure which ones are free um and then i'm just using triplanar and scaling it and then i'm using yeah so i'm using a plastic and uh just making it black and in the uh reflection i'm just using the uh using these uh, fingerprint-like texture projections as the roughness to get that nice look. And it just adds more uh, adds more to it. Um, and so I think that's about all I did for this. Um, I see something's overridden. Oh, emission weight. I don't know why that's set to two. There's no emission. Um, so that's all I did to do the rendering. It's not super... Super complicated, it's a lot easier than the actual wire part, but that's about it. Um, I can go into more depth if need be, but I think that should cover it. Oh, actually, I just noticed. So for the rendering of the wire, I'm not actually like uh, using like a poly wire. 
I am uh, using strands and then render objects as strands. I turn that on, cylinder, increase the tessel, and then tessellation's eight right now, which is pretty much fine. Um, and you can just play with the scales um, to change like the width of the wire when you're actually rendering it. But uh, yeah, actually that's, that's all I did now. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.